Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Well today uh, we're going to take exactly the same uh, route or flight plan as we did in my last video. If you didn't catch my last video we went from um, Tampa International a short hop over to KMCO Orlando International and we flew in a very 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 old 737 made and modeled by PMDG and uh, it looked fantastic the plane still looks awesome after all these years and when we we're at about 10 or 20,000 feet we took some photos of the clouds and the landscape uh, and and uh, in FSX we were flying in FSX so we took a lot of photos at 11,000 feet today we're going to take exactly the same route and we're going to take some photos at 11,000 feet and compare compare the scenery from that high up and compare the clouds now I know flight sim is over um, FSX is over 10 years old uh, but I just want to have a look just for the sake of interest and see how it stacks up uh, in regards to Flight Sim 2020. Uh, because as far as gameplay and immersion and all those kind of things, I think um, FSX is just as good as Flight Sim 2020. The only difference is the graphics and the eye candy is a heck of a lot more nicer and better in Flight Sim 2020. But other than that, at 11,000 feet, uh, FSX still looks like a nice, smooth, and a very attractive um, simulator. So we're going to set Tampa International as our departure. And we're going to come over here and set Orlando International as our arrival. Uh, we're going to come up to the right here and click on Low Altitude Airways on the left hand sorry. Over to the right on Approach, we're going to choose... ILS 35 left and there you have it our flight plan our heading and ILS frequencies are automatically loaded into our FMS or into our planes computer there is nothing else to do we don't need to to look into downloading other third-party programs to try and find uh, ILS numbers and frequencies and headings Everything is programmed into the plane's computer for us when we do it this way, follow this procedure. You can see our flight plan here and also our final approach uh, for our ILS landing. That is just brilliant. And that's as easy as it is. Uh, easy and as hard as it gets. Now I'm going to click on fly now, have a look at the loading times. I think it's about 20, 25 seconds uh, to load the load the game and set up the flight plan for us and put the plane on the runway. Um, before update five, it was a lot slower. Uh, but I've got to say, when you first load the game, when you're on the Windows desktop and you first load the game, it is still incredibly slow. Uh, when you're within the game and you're changing between the menus and different things, it is quite fast. But when you first uh, when you first click on the game icon on your desktop to uh, load the game to start, it is still very painfully slow, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I don't know if there's any way around that at all. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that. Now looking at the outside of the 737 compared with the PMDG 737, which is over 10 years ago, uh, the flight model on the um, PMDG 737 for FSX is still very, very good. It's awesome. It's fantastic. And it stacks up well against this one, I have to say. Uh, but the only difference, the main difference that I can notice is the shininess, is the reflection on the surfaces of the airplane in Flight Sim 2020 it just looks a lot more shinier, whereas in um, FSX it looks a little bit more dull. Um, so that's the main difference. But the actual flight models in FSX are still very, very good. If you get a good one from PMDG, for example. Um, okay, so we're going to depart and we're going to take off and we're going to head over to Orlando. 
and we're going to compare the clouds. Now I'm going to try and set the clouds up exactly how I had it on the FSX where I think I just had a few clouds selected. A few clouds, not too many, so we should get some nice views of the actual landscape. Okay, so let's set the plane up for uh, departure. Okay, so here you can see uh, I'm going to bring my flaps down. It looks like my flaps are down already. I've got my flaps down. I'm going to bring the pitch down so that the plane will want to just lift off naturally by itself as we get to 140 knots. Okay, let's have a look at inside a flight control panel. Uh, turn the auto throttle off. Flight director can stay on. Speed today, we're going to cruise around about 250 knots. We haven't got far to go, and I, I'm not in a rush. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry. I want to enjoy the, the scenery and take my time. Uh, we're going to turn LNAV on, so our plane follows the GPS, the, um, the, flight, the flight plan. Uh, altitude today, I'm going to set to 11,000 feet, about exactly the same where I had it when I was in Flight Simulator X on the last video. Virtual speed, I'm going to put that at positive, uh, positive 1,800. That will be fine. And I think we are ready to bring up the throttles. And start to head down the runway, take the brake off, and away we go. Now we should see our plane get very, very light and want to just lift off all by itself when we reach about 140 knots. We are in the 737 MAX today, in the Delta livery. Here we go, the plane wants to lift off all by itself. So that is BEA beautiful. Positive rate, I can bring up the gear. And I'll use the pitch buttons just to make sure we don't pitch up too steeply. To stop the plane from stalling. Our climb rate, I try and keep that at around about uh, 10 degrees. 10 or 15 degrees is a good climb rate as we climb out of Tampa International. Whoops, a bit too steep there I feel. There's Tampa International down there. Beautiful graphics. Just beautiful. Okay, so we're coming up to 9,000 feet now. And I'm just looking at the landscape down here and the clouds. And thinking about FSX, what that looked like. We're going to put the photos beside each other. Uh, so I'm going to take a photo of this now. Uh, like I said, the planes look different. They look better in uh, Flight Sim 2020 because of the, the reflection. See the shininess on the bodywork of the plane. And that's something I just didn't get in FSX. So the planes actually look like they are made out of metal. And they are shiny with a nice coat of paint. Uh, so that makes a big difference. But uh, have a look at the clouds. See what you think of the clouds compared to FSX. Uh, now as far as gameplay goes, FSX has just as much gameplay, immersion and fun as Flight Sim 2020. Uh, they're basically the same animal, to be honest. The only, the only difference seems to me to be is the, the eye candy, like the shininess of the planes, the beauty of the aeroplanes. Um, the clouds are very much of a muchness. Unless you're a real expert and really studying the clouds, you'll see a bit of a difference. Landscape from 10 or 11,000 feet up. 
Uh, let's just check our attitude, altitude where we are. We're at 10,000 feet now. Um, so let's take a photo of the landscapes down there. And we'll have a look at that beside the Flight Sim 2020. But as for gameplay and immersion and things like that, there is just as much in FSX as there is in Flight Sim 2020. Uh, so if you have a lower end machine or an older machine, uh, you can have equally as amount of fun, I believe, in FSX as you can in Flight Sim 2020. Um, as far as functionality of the, the cockpits, if you have a study level aircraft in um, FSX, maybe one from PMDG, there is enough immersion there for you if you like complicated and uh, the technicality of all the systems. Um, but in the basic flying that I do, I just keep it very, very simple. I use autopilot, ILS landing, and I program the flight control panels. For me, it's exactly the same amount of involvement in flying the plane and flight some 2020 as it is in FSX. Because that's all I do in FSX. I use the flight control panel, the autopilot, the ILS, all those sort of functions. I'm not the sort of guy that gets uh, uh, bogged down or deep down in all the functioning, the FMS and the, and the onboard computers. I don't really play around with all that. I set up my flight plan and my ILS approach all in the menus, the setup menus at the beginning. So when I get on the plane, I just start her up and I head off and I fly. I work the flight control panel, adjust my speed, my altitude, do the ILS landings or the manual landings, and the gameplay for me is exactly the same in FSX as it is in Flight Sim 2020. So let's take some more photos here. So like I said, the main difference for me seems to be the quality, the textures of the planes, and uh, also um, the detail on the ground. But in a flight simulator, I'm not worried about looking at the buildings and the trees, to be honest. I'm looking at the clouds, I'm looking at the sunset, the sunrise, and I'm sure there's a little bit of immersion when you look at the ground and look at the scenery on the ground uh, but I'm not really interested in how detailed someone's house looks or how detailed the factory or the cars and the highways look um, as long as it looks like I'm flying and I've got a nice smooth um, stable simulation that's the main thing for me if you're going to have a good simulator you need to be smooth I would I would certainly rather have uh, FSX running beautiful and smooth on my computer than have flight sim 2020 all stuttering and running slow. Um, you don't get the feeling of flying at all if the computer is stuttering, the graphics are stuttering or it's, or it's blocky or if it's not smooth. Uh, you completely lose that feeling of, of uh, flying through the clouds. So I would prefer to have FSX running beautiful and smooth on my computer than having Flight Sim 2020 all jerky and blocky and not 100% smooth. And like I say, the gameplay, the gameplay and the immersion in both games, for me, is about the same. Right, it's a very short hop, so probably very, very soon we can start looking at our descent rate. Just take a photo of that, uh, the water down there, the lakes. Beautiful day for flying. I just love those clouds, the reflections of the sun on the water and the wings of the plane. You can see that. Landscapes down there. So you go to the flight control panel. Now this is where I spend a lot of my time flying on this cockpit mode here and if you compare this cockpit scene here and the flight control panel when I'm flying the PDMG or the, or the standard uh, 737 S, S, FSX basically all the same thing a 
Right, so let's hit the uh, approach mode. Uh, and our plane should be adjusting itself for a lovely ILS landing. Bring our speed down a little bit more and start lowering our flaps. We're going a little bit fast, so I've put on the speed brakes today. Bring our speed down a little bit. Hundred and ninety. Right, we can lower our gear. Lower our flaps and confirm gear down and locked. Okay, just before we touch down, I will turn off the um, the auto throttle, the autopilot, and the um, Okay, let's turn off the um, flight director, the auto throttle, and the autopilot. And we'll bring the plane down in for a landing manually. Nice and soft, a bit of a flare. There we go. Put on the brakes. Speed brakes, reasonably smooth, not too bad for me, I've got to say, not too bad for me. One thing I'm not really keen on in Flight Sim 2020 is the way the throttle seems to work. Um, I am getting used to it. I can use it on the 737 and the other planes, but it certainly isn't as smooth and as nice as Flight Simulator X. And Flight Simulator and FSX, when I use, when I lift, raise, or move the throttle on my joystick, the throttles in the airplane move in unison. They move nice and smoothly as I as I um, increase my throttle and they just follow the movement of the throttle on my joystick in FSX whereas this one you've sort of got to do it in segments it's either full on full off or you can do it in small sort of segments it's, it's a little bit hard to explain but the throttle in FSX is certainly a heck of a lot better I believe whether it's just me or my settings, I'm not sure. I'm happy to learn if you have some helpful uh, sort of uh, any tips for me as far as getting the throttle working as, as smooth as it does in FSX. Okay, that's it guys. Welcome to Orlando International. Looks quite busy here today. There's a few planes around. I uh, hope you enjoyed that flight. Just a small hop and the photos I'm going to use now and we'll have a look at the difference between um, Flight Sim 2020 and FSX. I know you can't compare them. FSX is 20 years old or over 10 years old. Um, but it just go, I'm just, just want to prove my point that there is... Um, a lot of gameplay, immersion, and a lot of uh, a lot of fun to be had in FSX. So I'm not going to throw it away. I still enjoy it. It still looks good in my books. 
And uh, as I say, the way I fly the planes is exactly the same. The gameplay in FSX is exactly the same, just as good as what's in uh, Flight Sim 2020. Uh, just doesn't have all the pretty eye candy like the um, like 2020 has. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Thank you. Click the thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, make a comment below if you like. Also, a big hello to all my new subscribers. Had quite a few new subscribers over the last week or two, so I want to say welcome and thank you for uh, subscribing to the channel. If you have any ideas on what you would like to see, um, particular flights or planes or whatever, any ideas, something that you would like me to do, just put it in the comments below. Uh, but I do appreciate you following me along and I appreciate your support. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, keep well, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. Ciao. Where are you going, mate?